Okay, so as part of the mods of our MFB522, we want to put an on-off switch on the back up here somewhere, a real genuine on-off switch, because at the moment it's got a circuit sensing on-off switch. And uh, the on-off switch is over here, but unfortunately if you press it and hold it, it will flick on and off and on and off and on and off because it's circuit sensing so it just needs a pulse on that when you turn the real power on so we have to build a pulsing circuit to pulse our on off switch and that's what we have here we've got our voltage coming in and then we've got a capacitor that charges up and uh, across the resistor here triggers a relay so we get a temporary when we apply the power which is just jumping this little thing here you get a flash on the red light there LED which effectively will be now instead of the red LED I'll have a flash on the switch and that'll pulse my on off switch to turn on my circuit every time I apply power. This circuit here is my circuit for my at the moment my hi hat LED. So as my LED plays um, as the hi hat plays the LED is going to flash. And over here I have part of my circuit to play the two different types of sound. So if we actually turn on the old-fashioned way, our circuit, there she is, and we start her up, you can hear it. Just stop it for a second. This is one sound, this is another sound. And what is actually happening here is that this is the original sound, the cowbell, and this one is the cowbell along with the shift button. Here's your shift button there. So to get that click sound, you'd actually have to hold down the shift and hit the cowbell button at the same time. So there's our cowbell button. This is our little click clave that with this little solid state relay in there is actually, when I press that, it's actually pressing the shift key on my behalf. So now we have two sounds, the one button split into two sounds. And uh, in that way, we're going to end up splitting across here all 16 sounds for their own dedicated key instead of the crummy 8 keys that we have there. You can see the underneath of my split out of the MFB. And over here, we've got some of the mods that we're attacking all nicely connected up through. I decided to use some just uh, floppy disk drive cords connected so I could unplug them. This last one here is the LED run that runs up to my LEDs. A little heat sink on this chip here because that tends to heat up a bit. That's powering slightly larger LEDs that then are on the original. And here we've got some, it's actually a trigger. Here we've got some LED drivers as well. Here we've got an EEPROM that's got some of the code that and the logic for the actual sequencer inside. All your circuits are running top to bottom, so you've got kick, snare, clap, clave, cymbal, hi-hat. And then across the bottom here you've got your key circuits. Here is a, a MIDI opto circuit. 
you've got some timing circuits here, some timing chips and down the bottom here, I forget what those are it's so needless to say they're not important with doing your mods, your mods all happen in here and these are all your little op, op amps and there's a mixer chip at the back there that mixes them all together for your output yeah, it's a nice little circuit that, and it's going to be an absolute ripper by the time we finished. We got it into our box. Let's have a nice look at the top there. Yeah, looking at the moment, we'll start her up.